Welcome to John Allen Outside. I am John, and this video is a follow-up to a video I did last year regarding how to get the most out of your isobutane fuel canister when you are cooking on trail. Nobody wants to run out of fuel before the next resupply, and the information I'm discovering while doing this research can go a long way toward helping us backpackers use our fuel more efficiently. All of the data is being gathered directly by me through experimentation, and I'm being as precise and scientific as possible. Just a quick recap as to what I discovered last time. First, if you are cooking with the typical stove and cook pot combo like I do, although slower, cooking on low heat uses about one third less fuel to boil water than cooking on full blast, assuming no wind. Second, with a lid, you're gonna get about another five to 7% efficiency increase. And finally, the jet boil allows you to boil water almost twice as fast using about half the fuel as the typical burner and cook pot combination, although it weighs quite a bit more. However, Jetboil now has the stash, which is a much lighter option, and we're gonna take a look at how it performs in this video. Now to the goals of this video. One, we're gonna examine how much efficiency is gained by using a cook pot with a wider bottom. In my previous experiments, I used a Tokes 750 milliliter cook pot, which is somewhat narrow, and when the heat is turned up, a lot of it escapes up the side. The Tokes 900 is shorter and wider and in theory should prevent so much of that heat from escaping up the side of the pot. Number two, we're gonna determine the effect of wind on the efficiency of boiling water and I suspect that cooking in the wind is gonna be much less efficient. And three, we're gonna test the jet boil stash and compare it to a more traditional ultralight setup. Just a quick note about the methodology I use in these experiments. I boiled exactly 16 ounces of water, which I weighed on my scale to help with the accuracy, and I did boils with heat settings of low, medium, and full blast. For each boil, I measured how much fuel I used by measuring with a milligram scale. I measured the starting and ending water temperature and kept track of the time to get a full rolling boil. With all this information at hand, I calculated two key factors for each boil. One, the burn rate, that is the grams per minute of fuel burned. The higher the flame, the more fuel you're gonna be burning in a minute. Low, medium, and high are relative terms, so calculating that precise burn rate made it a bit more objective. Number two is the fuel cost. This is the amount of fuel needed to raise two cups of water by one degree, so grams per degree. I treated these data points as X and Y coordinates, plotted them on a chart, and arrived at a line of efficiency for each one of my setups. For example, here is the line of efficiency for my Tokes 750. The left side represents kind of lower heat, and you can see how the line then rises up as the heat is turned up, meaning efficiency is lost as the heat is increased. Any result using a different setup that would land a data point below this line would be more efficient, and anything above the line would be less efficient. In my first experiment, I tested the Tokes 900 milliliter cook pot, and let's take a look at the results. As you can see, the line of efficiency is well below the smaller cook pot, meaning that I'm using less fuel to boil the water. That wider bottom did make a substantial difference. Note, however, that at the lowest level, the lines of efficiency appear to intersect. This means that cooking at low heat is about the same level of efficiency for each cook pot, which makes sense because I'm not losing that much heat up the side of either one of these cook pots at that lower heat level. However, the lines quickly separate as the heat is turned up because more heat is escaping up the side of the narrower cook pot and more heat is being captured by the bottom of the wider cook pot. Also note the shape of the line for the 900. It's flatter, meaning that the efficiency is not lost as quickly as the 750 as you turn that heat up. However, when you get to full blast, that line starts to curve up a bit. And this makes sense because I could visibly see the flames going up the side of the wider 900 cook pot when you were on full blast. So overall, at medium heat, the 900 is about 20% more fuel efficient than the 750 while getting to a boil a little bit faster. Seems like a no-brainer to me to use that 900 when I'm out on trail. In my second experiment, I used a fan to simulate attempting to cook in the wind. So I set this up so that the flame was kind of blowing around like it normally would when it's windy out on trail. I just kind of used my judgment there and then I began testing. I knew it was going to be less efficient, 
but it was way less efficient. In fact, I had to stop each experiment after 15 minutes because the water just wasn't boiling. I was still able to calculate a line of efficiency even without getting to a boil because I measured the temperature change and the fuel used during each one of these 15 minute periods. So check out how inefficient cooking in the wind is. This line of efficiency is way up there. This matches my experience from the trail where it takes a lot longer to boil water in high winds and it's basically impossible unless you're cooking on full blast. After 15 minutes on low and medium heat, I had barely reached 140 degrees. In fact, I burned through almost an entire can of fuel just attempting the three boils for this experiment and in none of them did I get it to go to a complete boil. Protecting your stove from the wind is mandatory. Otherwise, you're gonna blow through a ton of fuel. I recommend some sort of windshield, but if you don't have one, you can always hide your stove behind a log, a stump, or a rock, or use some piece of gear like a sit pad as kind of a shield from that wind. In the third experiment, I tested the Jetboil Stash, which is the ultralight version of the Jetboil stove I tested in the last video. Thank you to my friend Pinto for lending me the stash for this video. He lent me his regular jet boil last time and it was a big help. The stash has a nice wide bottom similar to the Tokes 900 for capturing most of that precious heat and energy as you burn your fuel. The stash also has these coils on the bottom to help capture even more heat. So the burner that comes with the stash doesn't go as high as the Snowpeak stove that I'm using with my system in terms of that grams per minute of fuel burned. And overall, the Snowpeak has a much wider range of low to high. That means my low goes a lot lower and my high goes a lot higher than with the Jetboil stash stove. However, with the stash stove, the flame is much more concentrated and directed straight up at the bottom of the cook pot. Because of this narrower range of low to high, I only did two boils with the stash, one about as low as I could go, and the other one on full blast. As you can see, let's take a look at this line of efficiency. Look how it's nearly flat. This means that it doesn't seem to matter whether you're boiling on high or low. Either way, you're gonna use about the same amount of fuel to get that water to boil. Based on this, I think that boiling your water on high with the jet boil stash is really the way to go because I was able to boil two cups of water in about two and a half minutes, and I used slightly less fuel than when I boiled on low, and it took over four minutes to boil. The only downside to the stash that, is that I was really not able to achieve a super low burn rate like you'd use if you're gonna be simmering your food. So if you're gonna to try to cook something like a nor pasta side, you may need to just turn off the burner on the stash and let it stand for a while so you don't burn your food. Now let's compare the weight of each of these cooking setups. And I'm talking about the cook pot, the lid, and the stove. So my Toke 750 with my Snowpeak stove was 5.58 ounces. The Toke's 900, 6.12 ounces. And the Jetboil Stash, 7.11 ounces. Overall, not a whole lot of difference in weight between these three setups. The half ounce difference between the Toke's 750 and the 900, that seems like a small price to pay for that faster cooking time more efficient use of fuel. And at the same time, that extra volume is gonna help me avoid boiling over as much as I like to do when I'm out on the trail cooking. For an extra ounce, you can carry the Jetboil stash and use half the fuel while boiling twice as fast. Whatever option you choose is up to you, but now you have the information that you need to make an informed decision. Let's take a look at my conclusions from these experiments. Number one, a wide body cook pot is more efficient than a narrow body cook pot, but only as you turn up the heat. At medium to high heat, I saw about a 20% efficiency gain from the wider Tokes 900 over the narrower Tokes 750. Assuming no wind, cooking on low heat still uses the least amount of fuel with either one of these cook pot setups, but the cost of faster boils is less with a wider cook pot. Based on these results, I am most definitely gonna use my Tokes 900 on the trail this upcoming season, and I'm gonna try boiling my water on medium heat I think that's just gonna be the best option for me. Conclusion number two was cooking in high winds is extremely inefficient and it's just gonna be a complete waste of time and fuel if you don't shield your flame on your cook stove somehow. What I found in my experiment lines up with my experience on trail where it takes a long time to boil in the wind if you don't have some way to protect that flame. My suggestion is to use a shield of some kind and protect that flame and the heat from the wind and keep that flame concentrated 
on the bottom of the cook pot. If you don't have some kind of a heat shield in your cooking setup, you can always improvise. Conclusion number three, if you want to use half the fuel and boil twice as fast, the jet boil stash is a great option. Also, you can feel free to crank up the heat and not worry about wasting any fuel. It's only an ounce heavier than my setup, so not that bad at all. Big improvement over previous iterations of the jet boil in terms of weight. The only downside is that it's a little bit tougher to simmer with the stash, so something to consider there if you like to cook those Nora pasta sides or, or meals like that. Let's take a look at the cost. So the cost of the Tokes 900 plus my Snowpeak stove is about $120, which is a little bit less expensive than the stash at $145, but in the same ballpark. I hope you found this information helpful and can put it to use on your next trip. As always, if you found any value in this video, please hit that like button and consider subscribing to my channel. Thanks, and we'll see you out on the trail.